ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين we thank Allah Azza wa Jal and we praise Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for His blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us His pleasure in this worthy life and hereafter. Continue, inshallah, as every Friday, talking about the explanation of the beautiful book, Riyadh al-Salihin, the gardens of the virtues, of the medias of the virtues, of the Imam Nawa, rahmatullah alayhi, with the explanation of Shaykh ibn Thameen, rahmatullah alayhi, and other mashayikh, rahmatullah ta'ala. We are in the chapter of Ada'ul uh, Amana, and we talked, we started uh, this chapter. We talked about the ayat of the chapter that fulfilling the amana and trust. And as it is the norm for the Imam Anuwa, after bringing the ayat, he talks about the hadith of the a chapter or the bab, then uh, ex explains those hadith. Uh, regarding uh, the, this, this chapter and the hadith which is in, in this chapter it is hadith ayatul munafiqi thalath hadith ayatul munafiq thalath or that the ayat or the signs of the munafiq or hypocrite are three so on everywhere radiallahu ta'ala an أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال آية المنافق ثلاث أو ثلاث إذا حدث كذب وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا اؤتمن خان حديث متفق عليه وفي رواية وإن صام وصلى وزعم أنه مسلم This hadith Abu Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه in the race of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said the ayat or the, the signs of a hypocrite are three in another narration, there is four. Signs of a hypocrite are three. And he mentioned, if he speaks, he lies. He tells a lie. If he promises, he breaks his promise. And if he is entrusted with something, he breaks or betrays that trust. Hadith of Muttafaqun Ali or Hadith that uh, is narrated from Bukhari and Muslim that they agreed upon. Now the narration is that Muslim. That he even if he prays, if he fasts and prays and he pretends that he is Muslim, in this case, he is considered what? If he has these three qualities, he's considered a hypocrite. So here in this hadith, the uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, al ayah. Ay, what, what's the meaning of ayah? Normally we say ayah is what? It's the ayah in the Quran, like it's a sign. But ayah in the Arabic language has the meaning of a sign, alama. As Allah Azzawajal says, "Awalam yakul lahum ayatun yaglamu yaglamu yulama ubani Israel." It was not for them an evidence, an ayah, an alama that the the scholars of Banu Israel they know it. Yani the, there was was not for them an evidence that Isa Ibn Maryam he was. That he was true, Jabihin and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he came because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, they, the, the ulama of Bani Israel, the scholars of Bani Israel, they have it in their books. The Prophet would come, Isa alayhi wa would say that he, he would come. And the Quran said, يَعْلَمَهُ عُلَمَاءُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي بُشْ بَشْرَ بِهَا عِيسَ alayhi wa They know from their book that that is the Prophet that Isa alayhi wa sallam, he gave the glad tidings that he was going to come. After him. Or Allah Azzawajal says another meaning, or the or the same meaning, another ayah, wa ayatullahum anna hamal hamalna dhuriyatahum fil kulk al mashhoon. As an evidence or an, an, a sign for them is that we carried their progeny in the ships. Surah Yasin. So in this case, Prophet mentioned that are three signs, three qualities of a munaka, of a hypocrite. Now, who is the munaka? Who is the hypocrite? The hypocrite, 
he is the one who keeps secret the evil and he hides the evil in itself and shows the goodness. Or he hides the kufr, the disbelief, and shows and appears to be a believer. In Arabic language, it's, it's amazing, subhanAllah, how, how great is the Arabic language. Where you, when you go, you have to go, like always you study the words, go back to the origin in Arabic language. You all understand what's the relationship of, oh, how it resonates, the meaning of, of that thing, right? going back to the, 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 the uh, origin of the language. And then you're going to get the definition like in Sharia or something. So here when you go back to the Arabic language, it, uh, their origin from this word munafiq, mun, uh, like hypocrite or hypocrite, nifaq, hypocrisy is taken from nafiqa al yarbu'a. Nafiqa al yarbu'a. Yarbu'a is jarbu'a. Uh, is in, in English is called jarbu'a or the hopping my, mice or mouse, jumping mice. Usually, this is a rodent that is uh, in the uh, desert. For example, in Mongolia and Saudi Arabia and in uh, these countries. That, but subhanAllah, it's an amazing, <laughs> even the, the that animal is, is strange. Because it has the, the ears like a rabbit, the feet like a kangaroo, but small one, like 10, 15 centimeters. He jumps up to three meters with that. But what is the... I will, I'll show to you the, the picture. How is it? You look like it's a, it's a rabbit, like a rabbit. The ears, which is small. And it has a, a long tail and has long feet. And it jumps. But what is the relationship with the nifaq here? The relationship of, of, uh, with the nifaq is that they build barrels. They build tunnels. And when they build a tunnel... Subhanallah, yani it's really amazing. They build a tunnel and they enter from, like the, dig a hole and build tunnels inside. But they, they think for a, an escape exit. And when they build these tunnels, an escape exit, they build it to the point of reaching the surface and they don't open the surface. So in case somebody would come, an predator or animal or some, or even uh, a human being, they would come and they see the hole that he has entered the build the bird, they don't know what's inside in there. So that and this animal that goes, so you don't know where is it come and come from. And it comes from a place who have, has built the burrow and he knows the place who just is gonna push it with his nose and gets out and leaves. So what's the relationship here from the Nifaq? Because it appears to you that uh, that's a normal surface, but actually there is burrows underneath it and it's going to go for another way. So it shows to you uh, a face. And there is another way of it. Like these burrows that they built. So that's why the like Munafiq. He shows to you Islam. That he is a Muslim. He is a good person. And indeed actually it hides in himself. It hides the kufr. So took the relation from the word in Arabic language. It came. When did the Nifaq or the hypocrisy happen in the time of the Prophet? Was shown in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when Islam became strong. And before Islam, when the, for, for the 13 years, when Prophet Sallallahu and his Sahaba, they were in, in Mecca, there was no nifaq. Because uh, the, the Sahaba, the Prophet Sallallahu they were persecuted. How would they show that they were Muslims? And if they would show that they were Muslims, uh, they were going to be persecuted like them. So there was no munafiqin in that time. So after the Ghazwa to Badr, after the the battle of Badr, when the, the Muslims, they were victorious and the Mushrikeen or the leaders, the chiefs of the Mushrikeen, they were uh, killed in that battle and the Muslims, they, they showed that Allah Azawajal helped them. Then it started the hypocrisy to show. And they, there, these people, they show themselves. Allah Azawajal says, وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا سورة Al-Baqarah وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعْكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ So the Baqarah, ayah 14, when they meet the believers, that the hypocrites, they meet the believers, what do they say to them? We believe, we are like you. But when they go with their friends from the disbelievers, alone, nobody is listening to them, say, 
we are with you. We're just uh, mocking these believers. We're just uh, joking and playing with them. Allah Azza what did he say? Allah Allah knows their secret and their nor what they're hiding and what they're showing. Allah Azza wa He will throw their mockery back to them. What they did is going to be done to them. And he will make them wandering blindly in their tughyan, in their defiance. Allah Azza says about the munafiqeen. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ When the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they come to you, what do they say? They say, we bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Allah knows that you are the messenger. They don't, there is no need for the munafiqeen to bear witness. Allah knows that you are his messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he bears witness that the munafiqeen are liars. The, the hypocrites are liars. So that's, uh, that this is that the shahada or the witness, Allah Azza wa Jalla, his testimony of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, that is the, is the strongest one, that he they are munafiqeen or they are liars. They said, Nashhadu annaka Rasulullah. Yani, la fi anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa lihada. That's why Allah Azza wa Jalla, he know, knew that what, what they're saying is, is just they are lying because Allah knows what they have in their hearts. Now, according to this hadith, for the hypocrite to be known to us, there is some signs. So, meaning that these signs, if the person Allah Azul has given to him insight, Allah Azul has given light and guidance, he can know that this person really has the qualities of an of an ifaq and can be a munafiq hypocrite, and he, he can uh, check his circumstances. So some alamat or some signs, they don't need of insight. And you can see uh, these alamat or signs, you can tell that this person has some signs of the, of the nifaq or hypocrisy. So the Prophet mentioned three in this hadith, and he added another one in another hadith. The first one, he said, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبٍ if, if he speaks, he says a lie. So he says about some some person, oh, that man is does this and that, that, that. that brother is, is this and that. SubhanAllah. He just, uh, and he just speaks lies. And you see that person, oh, he did or he didn't do, he's just lying about himself, just lying about others. So if a person has this quality of his, even one quality of these three, the person has to purify his heart because this is one of the signs of hypocrisy. If a person has any of these three signs that the Prophet mentioned, that means that this person has a branch of nifaq in his heart, has a branch of hypocrisy in his heart. The second quality of a, of a munafiq or a, a quality of a, of a hypocrite, Prophet said, وَإِذَا If he promised, he doesn't keep his promise. Allah المستعان. لكن يخلف. يعني he breaks his promise. Said, I'm going to come. What time, brother? This time. 12 o'clock. Okay. What time? Morning. After Fajr, we meet. After Zuhur, we meet. It's okay. Okay, it happens like one time. One and two and three and four. Looks and it becomes like habit, normal. I'm going to give this. I'm going to give it to you. He doesn't give it to you. That's meaning he uh, makes promises, but doesn't keep these promises because the believer is the one is the one who fulfills his promises. Allah says about the believers one of the qualities of the believers is the opposite of the hypocrites and those who fulfill their promises when they give them the promises but the munafiq, the hypocrite he promises to you and he doesn't fulfill his promise. He doesn't fulfill his promise. The third is if he is to uh, uh, have or you, you entrust him with something, he gives him something to entrust. This person, what does he do? He betrays the trust. And we've been talking about the trust last two Fridays that anything in transaction betrays the trust. You tell him something to keep it as a secret. He spreads uh, to um, between or among 
other people. In his family, he trusts you in something, he betrays the trust for anything. So this is what any of these three qualities, any of them, not all of them three, but any of these three qualities, any of them, if it's in, in a person, that means the person has a branch of hypocrisy in his, himself, so he needs to cure that. He needs to uh, take care of that. Why the Prophet ﷺ told us about these three qualities of nifak? And scholars say that if these three are in a person, all of them three, that is munafiq khalis. And he, that really, he has all the qualities of a munafiq, of a he, real hypocrite. So why the Prophet ﷺ, what's the reason why he told us the these uh, seek, uh, the qualities of hypocrite. Number one, the first the first reason, so we can prevent ourselves from these qualities, so we don't fall in these this disease that munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they fall in this disease. Why? Because these the, these are the these are evil or a bad character, and this actually the scholars say if you do fall in these parts or these qualities, that means that you have a part of the nifaq al-amali, the practical hypocrisy. Practical hypocrisy and that would lead to nifaq i'tiqadi. That would lead to the nifaq which makes the person come out of the fold of Islam, which is the nifaq of the belief. The person, if he has those qualities, all three, another hadith is mentioned, another one, all these qualities that if the person, he, it, it is his character that he when he speaks, he lies. When he uh, is is entrusted with something, he betrays his trust. When he breaks always his promises, or most of the time he breaks his promises, that means it's, it's something is, is not good as this person. And he always, these are all qualities of a hypocrite. So number two reason why the Prophet told us, in order that we can to warn us from the people who are hypocrites, so we can know them ahead of time. We can know them and we pro protect and prevent ourselves from their shah and from their evil. So to prevent ourselves from the qualities, do not befall in the, these bad uh, character and, and qualities, and to not befall in the tricks of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, so you know them ahead of time that this, this guy, man, is not good. And he, what's, what is he doing? So we don't trust them, and maybe because we trust them, they can stab us on the back. So that's how to prevent ourselves because the believer he always he takes care of the amana is he entrusted he takes care uh from that and subhanallah sheikh mentioned uh, an example it is a pity or said that it is sad that some of the foolish people from the muslims they become a fool and they they say when somebody he promises i'm going to do this i'm going to do that he'll say injlizi, and he's a promise english promise Western promise or Islamic promise or Muslim promise. SubhanAllah. And then this is not right. This is how uh, it came It came for us, for the Muslims. I say, well, what time is it? 12? That's okay. 12, it means that at 2 o'clock, not, not 12. If it 12, 12. Why? Then in Western, they took it from us. They took it from Islam. That being uh, punctual, being accurate, being... Uh, uh, on, on time. This is from Islam. Uh, Islam teaches that, that, that to us. But at the same time, so when you say that, the Sheikh said that it was, you know, like English and West, in West, there is Muslim and there is not Muslim, but mainly, mainly they are not Muslims. So, uh, and actually, that a Muslim, when he is on time, when he is punctual, he is disciplined, disciplined, and that he does it first and foremost for the sake of Allah, because he knows and he fears Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why. He is, and he has these good qualities. But others who don't fear Allah, who don't believe in Allah, as well, and they do it for the sake of interest. And he may, they, they have just a relationship. Huh? Even they may smile in your face, but they don't feel that smile. They just want to do it for the sake of the job, or the sake of, of this. And you may find uh, uh, good people and he said uh, that they do it for a reason, but mainly the believer, he does it because everything around him in this world, like he knows that with, with that, he wants to earn the pleasure of Allah Azza wa in the dealing with his family, in the dealing with his parents, in the dealing with his children, or dealing with uh, co-workers, with, with everybody around him, he knows that the main goal of him is to please Allah Azza wa That's a believer. But the one who does, doesn't believe in Allah Azza wa does have this uh, just for, for, the, for the sake of mu'amalat, uh, like uh, dealings with the people, and that's it, or for the sake of the job, or 
or something. But the believer, he doesn't have that. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, when he mentioned that the ayat or the ayat al munafiq the, 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 the signs of the hypocrite, are three. In another narration, is, he said, وَمَنْ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خِصْلَةٌ مِنْهُنَّ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خِصْلَةٌ مِنْ نِفَاقِ حَتَّى يَدَعَهَا And if anyone has one of these three uh, sifat or qualities of the hypocrite, it is considered that he has one branch of nifaq until he leaves it. Until he abandons that quality. So, meaning that he comes back to that by being, uh, it's not that he, he came out of, of the fold of Islam, but he has a branch of nifaq. That's why the hadith in Muslim, the other part when he said, وَإِن صَامَ وَصَلَّ وَزَعْمَ أَنَّهُ مُسْلِمْ And even if he pray, he fasts, he prays, and he considers himself as a Muslim. Here the scholars said, regarding this hadith, because the Imam Nehuwe brought it, that some of the scholars consider the hadith, the hadith to be for the nifaq al i'tiqadi and nifaq, which is that, as we said, nifaq in, from the, the heart and the belief. But most uh, correct opinion that this uh, this is for nifaqun amali or for the practical, that the uh, uh, hypocrisy that uh, the person when he uh, has these qualities or any of those qualities, he is still considered a Muslim, but he has a branch of nifaq of hypocrisy. What is the fourth quality that the Prophet mentioned in another hadith? He mentioned wa idha ahada ghada. If the person he uh, pledges something. He betrays that. When he pledges to do something, he betrays that. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned about the nifaq, the nifaq al-i'tiqadi, the nifaq or the hypocrisy that makes a person out of the uh, coming out of the fold of Islam. Allah Azza mentioned about munafiqeen. When he said about them, اتخذوا أيمانهم جنة فصدوا عن سبيل الله إنهم ساء ما كانوا يعملون. They took their uh, their oaths that they are giving to the Prophet ﷺ as a shield, uh, saying, well, no, we, they swear by Allah, you, we are with you. They, they took them as a shield, Jannah, to protect their apparently Iman and Islam that they showed to the Prophet ﷺ. And they prevent from the way of Allah. Indeed, how, what an evil, what they, what the, the, the work that they used to do. They used to do, that's an evil of that. So that's why the munafiqeen, what did they do when they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He was, uh, they, they gained strength. They told to Abdullah bin Abi Salul and, and others, they they didn't have that courage. The mushrikeen, they had the courage to say, we don't believe what you're believing. They fought them, but the munafiqeen usually are what? Jubana are cowards. They don't have the courage to face the Muslims and they didn't have the courage to face the Muslims. So though they are working like, as we mentioned, like Jarbu and the Jarbur and that, that my, my popping mice uh, under the ground, those tunnels and they're stabbing the Muslims in the back. That he said, when he said Abdullah ibn Ubay, he said, Hada amrun qad tawajjah. Yeah, it really has, has become the, the the circumstances and the, the matter of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became big, meaning we cannot do anything. I see that you get, you have to enter in Islam apparently so in order what? To protect, to save their their blood and their, their life. Because for us, to become Muslim with the Shahada, became Muslim, they, they didn't, they don't, they cannot touch them. So, when, if we analyze all of these three qualities of the belief, of the munafiq, and the fourth one, the same thing, that when he pledges, he doesn't fulfill the pledge. What is the one thing that is common in all of these three? What is one thing that is common, like the main thing? Al-Kadid, lie. 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 Huh? All of them are forms of lie. All of them are forms of lie. What is lie? To tell something which you don't believe it. To tell something which you don't believe it. Even if you tell that, even if that thing that you are telling actually happened in reality. I'm going to say one more time. If you tell something which you don't believe it. But even if it, 
It is happening in reality. That's called lie in, in, in Arabic. Believe. How? For example, somebody says to you, where is Muhammad? Or Zayd? So this is, he's traveling. He's traveling. But he thinks, he in his in his heart, in his mind, he know, he thinks that he's not traveling. He's, he's here. Happened to be the Zayd or Muhammad, actually he's traveling. This in Arabic language is considered lie too. Because in, in your belief, in your etiquette, you are saying you know that you know what's the that that's the your knowledge is that he didn't travel, but you're saying to the person that he's traveling. So even if it happened in reality, that happened to be Qadr of Allah, that he happened to be that he's traveling. So that is considered a, a lie, even if the reality. So uh, that's in Arabic language. And يقول الإنسان شيء لا يعتقده ولو كان موافق للواقع في حقيقة الأمر. So if a person says something which he does not believe it, even if that thing happens in reality, that is considered a lie. That is considered a, a lie. So all of this, the first one, what? إذا حدث كذا. Lie. Pure lie. Second, إذا تمنى خان. If he is entrusted, he, what? He betrays the trust. What does he do? He's going to lie. Any, anything. He's going to promise you, uh, or he's going to give, uh, uh, or swear to you. And that is another type of a lie. Then, if he promised, he's not going to, oh, he's going to break his promise. He promised you to come on time. He didn't come on time. That's a lie himself. And then he is going to be the same thing. Not only he did not come, let's say, in time. So he, he lied to you by words and he lied to you by actions plus that will make him maybe to to in uh to invent another lie because he may say oh i was sleeping i was busy i i, I want here i want there so he's going to invent other lies lies upon lies all of these that's why and and the cheating any type of cheating so all of these qualities are from the qualities of the munafiqin that's why allah azawajal he tells the believers to be from the sadiqeen. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu, ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Or you believe, fear Allah, be conscious of him and be with the sadiqeen, those who are truthful, always the, the truthful. That's why in the ayah that we recited in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he mentioned and he uh, said to the believers, to be from the believers, that to be from the sadiqeen. That, and then he mentioned that, uh, at the end of the surah, you add the Allah with Munafikin or Munafika, Kol Mushikin or Mushikat, or to Allah while Mumina, while Mumina to Ken Allah for Rahima. So Allah can punish the hypocrites, men and women, and the Mushikin. He mentioned before what? The hypocrites. And as we know, the hypocrites are with Darkil Asfalimin and Nah, are the lowest part of Jahannam, and even lower than the Mushikin. Because the Mushik. You, you know that he is your enemy, the, the disbeliever, which is the, for example, the polytheist. He know, you, know, you know it. That's, he declares it. He, he has the courage to declare it. But the one who doesn't declare it and he smiles in your face and he is your brother, uh, that is, it's dangerous, more dangerous because he's your brother and maybe during the day or during the night, he stabs you on the back and he doesn't believe in what you are uh, when he's he's claiming his claim that he's a Muslim. He does not believe. So here, inshallah, we we, we stop with uh, explanation of this hadith. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and yarzukna al-iflas wa sidqa fi al-qawli wa al-amal to uh, grant us the sincerity and truthfulness in our words and our actions, and and uh, to grant us uh, the the pleasure of Him Subhanahu wa Taala and the good intentions in ourselves. In our children, in our communities, Allahumma ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us his pleasure. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who follow the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and protect us from the evil of the munafiqeen and the mushikeen and those who uh, oppose the Prophet and uh, oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inna kunna minu al-zalimeen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyyina Muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanak Allahum bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta subhanak. ونتوب إليك